we're going to be ranking the top five coaching candidates that I believe the Seattle Seahawks should be targeting this offseason. All right, let's get into it. Starting off with number five. I'm not sure if this guy is interested or getting interviews because I haven't seen him linked to anything. But when I look at his resume, he seems like the perfect fit. He's coached with the Seahawks for seven years. He was a wide receivers coach. He worked with guys like Doug Baldwin, Jermaine Kurtz, Golden Tate, Tyler Lockett. He made those players good. He also coached Russell Wilson as the quarterback coach. Russell Wilson enjoyed some of his best seasons with this guy as his quarterback coach. Then he becomes the passing game coordinator for Geno Smith. In 2022, Geno Smith had a career year. And then this year, he goes to Tampa Bay, where he leads Baker Mayfield in an elite career season as their offensive coordinator and takes them as one of the top eight teams in the league. And he runs that team's offense because their head coach is a defensive guy. So he's essentially the guy in charge of the Bucks offense. The Bucks offense was better this year with Baker than it was last year with Tom Brady. If you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Dave Canales. And he's very young. He's only been an offensive coordinator for one season. So I understand why he's not getting as much hype as some of these other guys. But boy, oh boy, does this guy stand out to me as somebody who I think the Seahawks could go out and hire. Dave Canales, man. He's a good, good coach. Number four, another guy who really hasn't been getting much attention, but I think he would be perfect. He had made the Ravens offense this season into a juggernaut. They went from a team that was struggling to score points. Lamar was struggling, especially their passing the offense. This season, once they brought this guy in as their offensive coordinator, their offense has skyrocketed to be one of the top in the league. I'm going with Todd Monkett, Baltimore Ravens offensive coordinator. I think he'd be great. He's innovative. He's a run-the-ball-first guy, but he makes that passing game look so good. He works really well with young, mobile quarterbacks. Geno Smith's not really mobile, but you could draft somebody. And that's kind of what we're getting at. All right, number three. If you watch the Texans against, who was it? Now I don't even remember. The Texans against the Browns. If you watch that playoff game, going into it, the storyline was the Browns have a great defense and the Texans have a rookie quarterback. So the Browns are probably going to win. Right? Wrong. Because this guy, that offensive coordinator, who works, who has worked with Kyle Shanahan, for many years in the past, both with Washington, Atlanta, and San Francisco. One of the youngest offensive coordinators in the NFL. This guy took the Houston Texans this year to the next level. Of course, I'm talking about Bobby Slowick. Come on, man. Bobby Slowick. Get this guy to Seattle. I'm not sure if they've reportedly requested to interview him yet, but... They should, and I hope that they will, because he is an absolute genius offensively. The things that he does, he gets these guys so far open. Like, I'm watching guys 15, 20 yards down the field, wide open, nobody near them. I think he'd be a perfect hire. I think he'd be a perfect hire. Again, all three of these guys... I'm a little leery of just because this was their first year as offensive coordinators. So you want to see a little bit more sustained success. That's why they are 5, 4, and 3, and they're not at the top of my list. Let's get to the top of my list now. Here we go. Number 2. This guy has made Tua Tagovailoa look like an MVP. Has studied under Mike McDaniel. Studied with Kyle Shanahan as well. 
this guy has taken part in what I think might be the most creative offense in the NFL. I'm talking about the Miami Dolphins' second-year offensive coordinator, Frank Smith. Frank Smith has been getting a ton of buzz for head coaching. He's interviewed already with the Falcons and with the Panthers, and the Seahawks have requested to interview him as well. I think he'd be a really solid hire if we miss out on my number one guy. Because Frank Smith learned a lot from Kyle Shanahan, learned a lot from Mike McDaniels, and that offense in Miami, for the first 14 weeks of the season, so good. Now they fell off at the end, because this is a warm weather team. They can't play in the cold. I think Seattle could make to solve that problem. And the way that he made Tua, an undersized, not very great quarterback, he's he's only very good at being accurate, is what that's his main trait. And he took that into literally making him look like prime Drew Brees this year. How could you not want some of that on your team? Imagine what he could do with Geno. Imagine what he could do with a rookie quarterback. Come on, Seattle. Make it happen. But finally, number one, the guy that I most would like to be the Seattle Seahawks next head coach. I've talked about him for so long on this podcast. Detroit Lions offensive coordinator Ben Johnson. Please, Seattle, bring Ben Johnson in to be your next head coach. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Just give him more money than Washington. He'll come around. He has been so good. So good. You know, when he became the Lions play caller, they were the worst offense in the NFL three years ago. The minute he took over, they they were were in the top 10, and they've been top 10 ever since. He's been calling plays for them for two and a half years now, and look what he's done with them. He He has made Jared Goff look like an MVP. He has made this Lions team look so special and got them to the final eight and likely the final four if they can beat Tampa they'll be in the final four he's got the mind he studied under guys like Sean Payton Daryl Bevel Joe Philbin solid offensive minds in this league are the types of guys that he has studied with the one reservation is he doesn't come from the Shanahan tree But I don't think that's the end-all, be-all. Shanahan Tree has produced some really nice coaches, but Ben Johnson could be one that comes from a different tree. And Ben Johnson seems like he'd be a really, really good hire. He also comes from the Lions and Dan Campbell's culture, which I think would be a great culture to bring in. It's kind of similar to Seattle's. It's a player first. It's a tough culture, but it's also player first. That is the type of thing that I like. I think Seahawks, it was definitely player first. I think they lacked a bit of toughness towards the end. And so I think if you need to bring a little bit more of that toughness back, maybe Ben Johnson could be the guy to do that. So ultimately, that is my top five. Top five candidates to replace Pete Carroll as a Seahawks head coach. You'll notice all five offensive guys, all five offensive coordinators. Yeah, that's who I want. I want an offensive coordinator. Like, You know what? Mike Vrabel, Dan Quinn, Mike McDonald, sure, they seem like they'd be fine. I wouldn't be mad if we hired them. But also, I think what we need to do is hire an offensive coach, and I would prefer any of those five offensive coaches over the best defensive coach. Because I think if you want to compete in the NFL these days, more often than not, it's the offensive coaches who are winning If you look at the league, I mean, 14 offensive coaches right now in the NFL. 11 of them had winning records. 11 of them. And then, and the three that didn't, Kevin O'Connell, who obviously Kirk Cousins got hurt. So it's, I mean, can you really blame him? Uh, Brian Dable, 
who again, Daniel Jones got hurt, so can you really blame him? And the last one was, uh, who was it? It was, I'm trying to rack my brain now. Somebody in the AFC. Oh, oh, Sean Payton was the other one. And he, for what it's worth, turned around Denver and got them damn near close to a winning season. So they were, the offensive coaches have just been more successful than defensive coaches. And there's a few defensive coaches who are in the playoffs. You know, Sean McDermott's there. Mike Tomlin made it, lost. Todd Bowles. There's some defensive guys who make the playoffs. But generally, the trend of the league is offense. Seven out of the last ten Super Bowls, offense. Andy Reid, Sean McVay, Doug Peterson. Those are the guys winning Super Bowls. Bruce Arians. Belichick and Pete Carroll are the, the only two defensive head coaches to win Super Bowls in since, I believe, 20, 2008, I think. Like, it's been a while. Mike Tomlin won, won it in 2008, I think. So, yeah, there's... Outside of the legendary defensive guys, Belichick, Carroll, who, by the way, are now both not coaches anymore. Belichick might be again soon. But outside of those guys, defensive coaches are not winning Super Bowls. It's offensive coaches. That's who's winning these Super Bowls. I think Seattle needs to go in that direction. I really do. And I will die on that hill. All right, that's going to do it for the show today. Thank you all for listening. This was the Northwest Sportscast. I hope you all have a great day. Leave a comment if you would like. Tell me what am I wrong about, what am I right about, all that good stuff. We'll see you guys in the next one.